Well, if you have your Bible with you, we've already read the scripture, but we'll read it again if you don't mind stand for the reading of the word. I'm just going to share one scripture with you at the moment. And uh, it's out of John 38. And the scripture just simply says, out of your belly shall, ro- shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow l- rivers of living water. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say might. He didn't say if you try hard enough. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Father, we thank you for your word today that it is truth and that it will impart life to us today. Lord, your waters are refreshing. Your waters are renewing. They're energizing. They're healing. They're restoring. So we just receive your waters today and we give you the glory, praise, and honor. We ask you, Lord, to open our eyes, open our ears, and open our hearts that we may hear in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory for it. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise God. You know, I think sometimes of things that we like in life. Does everybody like ice cream? (laughs) <laughs> you know, we may not need it, but we like ice cream. And then there are things like, you know, when I was a child, my mom would say, eat your vegetables. And I didn't like the vegetables, but she was emphasizing to me, to me that my body needed those vegetables, that I needed those vegetables. And so Jesus told the disciples in Acts chapter one, he said, tarry ye in the upper room until you are filled with the spirit. And I'm gonna go over some things. See, it's like I said, as far as those vegetables, those green beans and those things, they have nutrients that my body needed, but I didn't like them. And sometimes you hear bad things about various foods, you know. We were sharing the other day about tilapia. In, in America, they have farm-raised tilapia and they will use uh, human feces or human manure or poop or whatever the word is to feed the fish. And ever since I found out that, I have not had a desire for tilapia anymore. And so, When it comes to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, many times we've heard bad things. You know, we've heard like it's it's already passed away. That's not for today. But the the um, where they get that scripture from, the Bible says, "Where there be where there be tongues, they shall cease. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. It'll be no more." But we still have knowledge, right? So if we still have knowledge, then the spirit, the tongues have not passed away. And the tongues are simply evidence of the spirit. For example, when you go and you buy a pair of shoes, you don't go to the shoe store and say, I wanna buy a pair of tongues. You go looking for a pair of shoes because the shoes will carry you. They will be safety to your feet. When you walk on hot pavement, they will protect your feet. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. When we understand that the Holy Spirit is something, someone, he's a person, number one, and he's going to carry us when we, when we can't carry ourselves. He will strengthen us when we're weak. He will resurrect us when we feel dead. The Holy Spirit has a desire to live and abide in every one of us. I was sharing with Sister Rebecca earlier that when I was a young boy, my mom and dad would take me and drop me at the Baptist church. And uh, all I remembered was there was a couple that was friends with my mom and dad. It was our local banker. And they went to a spirit-filled church. And when they did, they got filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And when they came back to the Baptist church, they were so excited. They wanted everybody to get what they had had. It was so refreshing and so fulfilling. And they were asked to leave the church because of the Holy Ghost. And so that was the only mindset that I had of the baptism of the Spirit is that couple, I never heard anybody pray in tongues. I only heard that person. And the Bible also says if we ask God uh, for bread, he's not gonna give us a stone. You know, he's not gonna give you a serpent. God will give you what you ask for. And so we can trust in him. We can confide in him. And so when, when I was in jail, I got saved in a jail. And when I was in, got born again, received Jesus in the baptism of the spirit. But when I was in jail, there was a jailer that had a book and I heard him talking to someone else about it. And I said, can I read that book when he gets through with it? And he said, well, are you a Christian? And I simply said, well, if you were to look at the fruit in my life, I don't think you would consider me a Christian. I said, but I do believe in God. And he said, okay, so he brought the book and then he started buying me books and bringing to the jail for me. And so he bought me a book titled The, ba the, the Bible Way to Receive the Holy Spirit. And I began to read that book and I saw, he said, when you receive the Spirit, you're gonna receive power from on high. You're gonna receive power from on high, the baptism of the Spirit. It's he's, he's gonna be fire inside of you. And so I said, well, Lord, this looks like what I need because I'm not able to stop doing the things that I'm doing that are wrong and I'm not able to do the things that I know that are right. And so I said, if this is still for today and if it's still real, then I want it. And I just lifted my hands to heaven and the Lord filled me with his spirit. And as I prayed in tongues, as I began to pray in the spirit, tears would just stream down my face. I wasn't sad, I wasn't upset. It was just the spirit of God cleansing me, purging me from the hurts and wounds and things of that nature. And so um, I went to Columbia, South, uh, North, uh, South America about, what was it? It's been about uh, 2015, I think, somewhere along in there. and. Uh, just a friend on Facebook said to me, uh, she sent me a message and she said, my daughter is dying and if you have the cure, please send it. And I just thought, who does she think I am? I'm not a doctor. I, I don't even know what's wrong with her daughter. And I don't speak Spanish. They speak Spanish over there. I don't speak Spanish and she doesn't speak English. And so the more I thought about it, I said, you know what? I do have the answer. Jesus is the answer. And so I talked to my boss and I said, listen, can I get off on Thursday and Friday? Or, or I said, can I get off on Monday and Tuesday? And he said, yeah, I guess if you need to. I didn't tell anybody what I was gonna do. I booked a flight to South America. I just knew in my spirit, God wanted me to go and pray for this young girl. So I booked a, booked a flight and I sent a message and I said, I'm, I'm coming and I'm gonna pray for her and Jesus will heal her. Well, they thought I was crazy. Uh, in Colombia, they're very poor. They don't know where their next meal's coming from. And there's no work. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big struggle there. It's like that in a lot of parts of the world. But so they didn't believe, you know, they didn't, usually in a situation like that, people don't feel worthy. And so, I booked my flight and away I went. Never thought about the language barrier. You know, it'd be like me coming to the Philippines and, and there's nobody to interpret, you know. And so I got there and I said, uh, or, or as I was getting close to Columbia, there was a man that was sitting next to me and he said, what brings you to my country? I said, well, I said, I am going to pray for a, a young girl. I said, she's got something wrong with her. Her mother said she's dying. And she sent me a message and said, if you have the cure, please send it. And I said, so I've got the cure. Jesus lives inside of me and I'm gonna go and pray. 
And so he said, well, have you met these people before? And I said, no, I've never met them. He said, well, you, you speak Spanish? I said, no. He said, well, do they speak English? I said, no. And he said, well, don't you think this is kind of dangerous? I said, I don't know. I never thought about it. I just know I'm supposed to go pray for her. So I got there and I told him, I said, can you send them a message and tell them what I'm wearing so they'll recognize me when I come in the airport? So he sent them a message. So they met me and, and the young girl was actually about 38 years old, in her 30s, I forget the age. But she had rheumatoid arthritis and uh, her, immune system, her, her, her immune system was attacking her vital organs. And so the doctors had said she wouldn't live. And so I went and I sat across the table from her. I told them, they took me to my hotel and dropped me off. I said, come back tomorrow and we're gonna pray. So they came back the next day and there was a little small table there and I sat on one side, the mother sat and the daughter sat and I reached out and took her by the hands and as soon as I started praying, I started praying in the Holy Ghost. I just, the moment I started praying, a demon spirit manifested in her and she began to scream and shout and for about five minutes and then when it stopped, she was opening and closing her hands and she said, it's gone. It's all gone. And, and so we went the next day. They wanted to take me around Bogota, the capital of Colombia, and show me around. And so she was just walking and she would say, oh my God, no more pain. No more pain in my feet. It's all gone. All I had to do, see, if I didn't have the Holy Ghost to lead me, if I didn't have the Spirit of God to give me a, word that I should go, she would have probably died. And there's many situations like that in our lives. You need the Holy Spirit. So I begin by saying, you know, like vegetables or certain things in life that we need that we, we've heard bad things about or we don't like the taste of them, so we shun them or we, we reject them. But the Holy Ghost, I'm gonna read a couple of things or give you 10 points uh, what, why we need the Holy Spirit. Number one, he's our helper and he teaches us things and reminds us things. In John 14, 26, Jesus told his disciples, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Holy Spirit is your teacher and he will bring things to your remembrance. When you get old and you can't remember anything, you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost because he will bring them to your remembrance. Number two, he convicts the world of sin. In addition to providing wise counsel, attorneys also provide evidence used to convict criminals. In a similar fashion, the Holy Spirit will prove the sin, righteousness, and judgment of the world. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is your advantage that I go away. See, sometimes we think, man, I wish Jesus was here. And Jesus is saying, it's, it's your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will, not maybe, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. So we need the Holy Spirit. We need him as our helper. And then number three, he dwells in believers and fills us. The Holy Spirit is God's presence in the lives of believers. Do you know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Then another one, number four, he is the source of revolution, revelation wisdom and power. The Holy Spirit is the source. He's your very source of revelation. He's your source of wisdom and he's your source of power. These are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. 
For who knows a person's thoughts except for their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. That's found in 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. Number five, the spirit guides us into all truth and knowledge of what is to come. In other words, there's gonna be things that are going to happen and he can warn you he can reveal those things to you. It's, this, it's, it's like the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, tongues and interpretation of tongues. The spirit of God through those giftings imparts and speaks to us. And so he guides us, the Holy Spirit guides us. You know, here last year, I've got a, pastor friend and he's blind and he wanted to go to a church anniversary and so I said yeah I'll take you and he said well no maybe I shouldn't go he said Deborah he's talking about his wife Deborah can't come and and I have to have somebody to lead me to guide me around and I said brother I'll take you don't worry I'll, I'll guide you so we get in the building and there's a post like this it's not quite that big but it's about this size and so he's got my arm and I'm walking and then there's another brother and he starts greeting me. Hey, brother. So I let go of him and I go to shake his hand and the pastor ran into that post. Boom. <laughs> I was not a very good guide. And he said, am I, he asked me, am I bleeding? <laughs> I said, no, but the post is in bad shape. You hurt the post. So the Holy Spirit will guide us He's not gonna fail you like I did. He will lead you, he'll take you around obstacles and help you through the situations that you're going through on a regular, on a daily basis. So number five, he guides us to all truth and knowledge of what is to come. The Holy Spirit tells us what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth in John 16, 13 because he guides believers into all truth. He will guide you. You will feel, when you're, when you're going the wrong way, the Holy Spirit will begin to push you. He'll begin to nudge you. You may even feel miserable. You know, he'll allow you to begin to feel miserable because he's trying to get you to go the right direction. So he guides us into all truth. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify Jesus because it is from him, from Jesus, that he receives what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father, Jesus says, is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So when we get in here, we have to have the spirit to bring forth revelation knowledge, to share things. I, I was sharing a little earlier, I was in a, I was in a church, I, it was my church and I was during worship and I was just worshiping God and I opened my eyes and there was a lady sitting there and the Holy Spirit said to me, she was in an automobile accident in, in, uh, two, in, in, in 1980. And he said, and she damaged the vital organ. I want you to pray for her. I want to heal her. So I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. In my natural mind, I had no way of understanding what this lady had been through. But the Spirit of God knew. So he said to me, I want you to pray for her because she was in a car accident and she damaged the vital organ in 1980. But when you are walking in the spirit, your heart will, your head will argue with what your heart knows. When God gives you revelation knowledge in your, in your heart, your head will begin to argue and say, you don't know that. You're gonna look like a fool when you say that. And so I said to her, I looked at her and I said, ma'am, were you in a car accident in the 80s? And she said, yeah, 1980. And I said, and you damaged a vital organ. She said, yeah, my right kidney. And I said, the Lord wants to heal you. Would it be okay for me to pray for you? And she said, before she could say anything, the lady that had invited her grabbed her by the arm and brought her forward. And so 
she took a stance. She thought I was going to try to push her down. So she took a stance and I just took her by the hand and prayed for her. And she went back and sat down and she told that lady, he got that stuff off of the internet. And she said, he didn't, need, he didn't even know you. He didn't know you're going to be here today. And she said, well, you must have told him. And she said, no, I didn't even know you in the 80s. I didn't know you'd been in a car accident. See, to the natural mind, it can't receive the things of the spirit. We receive them with the heart. So when I'm talking to you about the Holy Ghost this morning, about being filled with the spirit and speaking in tongues, your head will resist that, but your heart will want that. Your heart will desire it because it's truth. And so number six he gives gifts. Now, I don't know about you, but I like gifts. And so he says, attributes of the Holy Spirit such as wisdom, knowledge, and power are manifested in the lives of believers for the good of others. More gifts are listed in 1 Corinthians 12. So the Holy Spirit wants to come and give you gifts. I was also sharing earlier after I got saved and filled with the Spirit, I began to covet. Paul said, covet the best gift. Covet, what is the best gift for you? It's the one that God is gonna to need to use in your life. He knows the people that you're gonna encounter. He knows what he's called you to do. So he's gonna give you, he's gonna to reveal to you, you'll have, a, you'll have a hunger or a thirst for a particular gift. And Paul said, covet it, desire it, want it. Want it like you want your next meal. And God will begin to do that. And so I was praying and I was asking God, I said, Lord, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to use me in the gifts of the Spirit. And I was just reading and the scripture said, you can pray in tongues and then I'll give you the interpretation. So I just said, Lord, you said right here, I could pray in tongues and you would give me the interpretation. So I began to, and then I said, thus saith the Lord, you've been seeking me concerning the gifts of the spirit. And he said, I'm going to begin to, uh, you're gonna to begin to operate in the gifts in the next two weeks, but it's gonna take obedience and commitment to operate in those gifts. And so I went to a meeting the next day. And while I'm there, the pastor, the minister, after he preached, he said, sir, can I pray for you? And I said, sure. And I came up and he, he prayed over me word for word. He said, you've been seeking God concerning the gifts of the spirit and they're gonna to begin to work in your life in the next two weeks, but it's gonna take obedience and commitment. So I was coveting those gifts. I was desiring those gifts. And then when I stepped out in faith, not fear, but when I stepped out in faith, God began to, to confirm to me, you're walking in the gifts and then they just began to, to uh, increase. When I went to Africa, there was a, you know, I prayed for a few people that, you know, I asked for anybody needed to get saved and I prayed for those people. And then when it came to, uh, after I'd prayed for them, I started ministering prophetically to some of the people. And then the line got longer and longer and longer and it was like just constant, more and more people coming forward. And I, I would go back to my room at night and the, the enemy would say, you're just making that stuff up. You don't know that stuff. You don't, you know, you told this man this and you don't know that. And it was just like, I would feel inside like I'm not ever gonna prophesy again because, you know, maybe I am making this stuff up. You know, it's a battle. Your head argues with your heart. And so we went to another location and we'd been ministering and the pastor that was there he was talking to another pastor and I heard him telling about this prophet. And he said, he said, uh, I want you, he said, man, this guy, he's, he said, he is point on. And he was telling all these different, different things. I couldn't understand that good, but I, I'm thinking, man, I want this person to pray for me. So I said, brother, do you think we could go to that person and he could pray over me? And he said, it's you, man of God, it's you. <laughs> so he was talking about when I ministered in the church, like there was one young man and I turned to him and I said, your, your college is already paid for, your ticket has already been paid. And I didn't know it in the natural, but the spirit of God did. So he was revealing that. And so 
I'm talking about the need for the, for the Holy Ghost, the need for the Spirit. If we want to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, we need the Holy Spirit. And so I've seen those things where he comes in and he begins to move and live and have his being inside of us. Then in seven, it says, the Holy Spirit is our seal. He has sealed us as believers. In ancient times, a seal was a legal signature. You know, they had their rings and they would take hot wax and, and, or heat the ring and they'd stick it in the wax and they would seal something like when they did Jesus when he was behind the tomb, behind the stone. They sealed it and the, they put that stamp on there. Well, the Holy Spirit puts a stamp on us and he is our stamp, he is our seal that we belong to Jesus, that we belong to God. So it's in the same way that he puts his stamp on us. The spirit, he helps us in, in these, uh, you know, there's times that you may, the enemy may say to you, well, you're not born again. You're not a Christian. Look, if you were a Christian, you wouldn't have done this or you wouldn't have done that. But the Holy Spirit is that seal. We can remember, if I can pray in tongues, I, I've still got the seal. I've still, a, a, so, so the Holy Spirit is our seal or our proof that we are on our way to heaven. And then number eight, he helps us in our weaknesses and intercedes for us. We all have times when we feel weak and don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit helps us align with God's will by interceding for us during those times. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Number nine, he makes believers new and grants us eternal life. The Holy Spirit works in the lives of believers to renew, to sanctify, and make us holy. Just as the Holy Spirit raised Christ from the dead, he also will give eternal life to believers in Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to the death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ from the dead shall also give you, give life to your mortal bodies because of his Spirit who lives in you. Romans 8, 10, and 11. And then lastly, he sanctifies and enables good fruit in our lives. The, word of Holy, the, the work of the Holy Spirit in a Christian's life is an ongoing process of becoming holy through sanctification. Through the conviction and power of the Holy Spirit, believers will not indulge in sinful acts of the flesh, but will bear the good fruit of the Spirit. Amen. So, you know, I, want, I, I hope to whet your appetite to give you a desire for the Holy Spirit because he is the power. He is the resurrection life. When you see some situation that's before you and it looks impossible, all you have to do is pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will begin to intercede through you. I came upon a car accident years ago and it, the, they had hit a cement pillar and ejected both women out of the car. One was probably from here across the street and the other one was about 150 foot, maybe, maybe twice that far. And the second one had a big hole in top of her head. But they were both conscious. They were both trying to get up. And I put a coat over the one. I put my emergency lights on on my truck and I called 911, but they're both trying to get up. The lady has this huge hole in top of her head. I didn't have anything to cover her with, but the blood. So I just began to pray in the spirit. I said, Holy Ghost, you said that I don't always know how to pray or what to pray for, and you do. So I'm just asking you to pray through me. And I just stood there by that body and Isha Koroka Tashara Ronde, just praying in the Holy Ghost. Doesn't make sense to the natural mind to do things like that. 
but the spirit was doing something. The spirit has the ability to cr- do a creative miracle. And so these, both of these girls lived and, and I don't have any doubt had I not been there to pray in the spirit, they would not have survived. So it's so vital. The Holy Spirit having him living inside of us is so vital. And then lastly, I want to share a testimony that John G. Lake shared. So he went and the scientists wanted to do this experiment with him. So they attached attached to his head this instrument that would record the vibrations of the brain. And this instrument had an indicator that would register the vibrations of the mind. So he said he began reciting things, repeating things like the 23rd Psalm. Things, you know, that would that would soothe you. Have you ever noticed that if you get full of anxiety, you, you're, you know, maybe fearful, you can begin to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. As you begin to close your eyes and, and recite that 23rd Psalm, peace begins to come over you. So John G. Lake was doing that. He was reciting the 23rd Psalm. Then he repeated the 23rd Psalm, then the 35th chapter of Isaiah, then the 91st Psalm, then Paul's address before Agrippa. After this, he says, I went into secular literature and recited Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade and last, posed the raven with a prayer in my heart that a psychological moment, God would anoint my soul in the Holy Ghost. So he's saying as he's doing these things, he's got the spirit of God living inside of him. And as he's, as he's reciting these things, it's registering on this device they had put on him. And he said his difficulty in doing that was to keep, he, he was having a hard time because the Holy Spirit was wanting to rise up inside of him. Have you ever noticed that when those of you that have the spirit, that when you begin to pray in the spirit for a while, you'll feel something rise up and you go, ugh, and you release that. And and so he said he was having a hard time to hold the Holy Spirit back. It's like being on a race horse and he's out there, a race horse wants to run, he wants to race. And you're having to hold him back until the proper time. Same, Same scenario. And so he said, my difficulty that was while reciting went on, I could not keep the Spirit from coming upon me. And when I got through Poe's Raven, they said, you are a phenomenon. You have a wider mental range than any human being we have ever seen. And then he goes on to say, in reality, it was not so. It was because the spirit of God kept coming up on me in degree so I could feel the moving of the spirit within me. So he could feel the spirit coming up and he's trying to keep the spirit down and just read these normal things. So he said, at last he closed his eyes and he said, suddenly the spirit of God struck me in a burst of praise and tongues. And he said, the indicator on that instrument went off of the charts. It wouldn't even register all that was going on. And he said, the professor said, we have never seen anything like this. And he simply said to him, gentlemen, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of God. So I'm saying to you today, the Spirit of God is the greatest gift outside of eternal life that you could ever receive. It's more important than money, more important than anything. You know, uh, there was a time that uh, a friend of mine in the church was praying about buying a swing set for the church, for the children. And uh, I, I was just praying in the spirit. We were having an all night prayer meeting and I was just praying in the spirit. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, tell that person that I am going to begin to bless them with the money to get the swing set, but it's not going to be in a way where they can give credit to man. They're gonna know it had to be me. So I went over to the person and I said, listen, I know in the natural you've been praying for this swing set. I said, but I want you to understand, 
I heard the Spirit of God say, he's gonna give you the money, but it's not gonna be in a way where you can credit man. It's, you're gonna have to give the glory to God. The very next day, this person, when they got home, they, they stopped their car. When they opened the door, there's a wad of money laying there. In American dollars, it was like two, $250, $300. The very next day, they were coming home, they stopped at a stop sign and they saw something in the intersection. There's another bundle of money in the intersection. In two days' time, God provided them with over $500, all because of the Holy Ghost giving a word. Do you see the importance of having the Spirit in your life? Do you see how vital it is that, you know, you, you go get beyond the fear of tongues or you get beyond all of that stuff and say, God, I want your very best gift. I want what you have for me. And, and when the Spirit of God comes into your life, you will never be the same. You will be like a flame of fire. I wanted to close before we pray. I want to share this. When I went to Columbia, after I prayed for this young girl, they said to me, uh, the lady said, my son wants to come and he wants you to pray for him. But he's been smoking marijuana. He's high right now. And I said, it's okay, tell him to come on. So they brought the son and I told him, I said, you need to accept Jesus. He told me, I want you to get rid of all of the negative energy in me. I said, it doesn't work like that. I said, if you will accept Jesus, the darkness has to go. But he kept saying, no, I don't want to accept Jesus. I just want to get rid of my problems. You can't have two masters. You know, you're going to serve the one and hate the other. And so I looked over at the, his sister and I said, share your testimony with him. Tell him what the Lord did for you. And she said, I, I don't think so, pastor. I said, no, you tell him. And I kept telling her, I don't know why she was fearful, but she finally began to tell him about the Lord healing her. And his eyes got big and he got on the edge of his seat and I, he said, okay, I want Jesus. So I prayed for him. There was no outward sign. It didn't look like anything was happening. He was just sitting there looking around. But after they took me back to my hotel room, the mother was trying to tell me something. Now, you have to understand, I had to use Google Translate to communicate with these people. Because remember, I told you, I don't speak Spanish and they don't speak English. So I, it was frustrating to have to type it in and then let them read it. And they type it back, you know. And, but the soul, a soul is worth that, amen? And so at the, after, the, after it was all said and done, the lady's trying to tell me something. Boy, she's just going, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh my God, she knows I don't understand her. Why she keep telling me all this? And so I said, uh, the daughter said to me, she said, she, she said, she could talk just a little bit, a few words, but she translated to me and said, mom wants you to watch the video. There's a bright light on the video. There's a blue light. So I go back and as I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, there's a bright light Come, every time I would begin to pray, there was a bright light. It would get brighter. As I prayed louder, the light would get brighter. And it was kind of like on a stereo, how you see these lights. Sometimes as, as the volume gets higher, the lights get brighter. It was the same way. And the Spirit of God was just saying, don't walk by sight. Whether you see anything or feel anything, I'm still at work. And so... The Spirit of God, and the, the, that, that color was blue. It was a bright blue, like a blue flame. And I was reminded, you know, the more I thought about it, I was reminded that this, that on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said they were baptized with tongues of fire. Fire in its most intense heat is a blue color. And so God wants to, he wants to fill you with his spirit today. If you haven't received Jesus, he first and foremost wants, wants to fill you. Is, is, has everybody here received Jesus? Everybody's got Jesus. 
Is there anybody here that you've never received the Holy Spirit? Anybody that wants to receive? So what I want you to do, I want to pray for you. And we're going to just lay hands on you and impart. We're going to release the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask God to fill you with His Spirit. And so if that's you, and you want God to fill you with His Spirit, I want you just to line up across the front here and I'm gonna pray for you. Just go ahead and come. You know, it doesn't matter if you're the first one or last one or whatever. We're just gonna pray and God's gonna fill you with His Spirit. He's gonna set you free. There's things that you've been entangled with and He's gonna set you free. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, if you've already been filled with the Spirit, I want you to intercede.